Hi, I'm Dave Phillips. I'm here at the Titleist Performance Institute. Today, Greg, we're talking about the driver and hopefully getting some people some more distance with maybe not an increase in club head speed. Well, I think that's the big point is that a lot of people think if I'm going to hit the ball farther, I have to swing harder, right? Which obviously that is a and way to... And you can do it. Yeah, yeah, you can do that. But sometimes people just aren't optimizing what they're doing. That's when right. we talk about how technology can help us figure out how to hit you farther, this is a perfect example. Everybody should have a chance to get in front of a track man or launch monitor to yep. be able to see if what they're swinging is optimized. That's right. right. That's so right. why don't we just show by example. Okay. Why don't you hit one real quick. Okay. See what you got, Dave. See what I got. Wasn't my best, but. Wasn't your best, but look, look, let's look at some of these numbers. So first okay. thing we just noticed is you got 109 club head speed. That's pretty good. Not, Not bad. bad for an old man. Not bad for 50 plus. 109 club head speed. His carry was 252 yards. Now, okay. I think a lot of people would say, well, let's just, uh, let's just try and swing harder, yep. right? Okay, well, let's, let's take a look at this. Now, you carried 252. Now, there's a couple things that affect how far the ball carries, right? Number one is how hard you hit it. Number two is the spin, right? So if a ball spins a lot, sometimes it won't carry as much, That's right. right? So we always want to try and launch it higher, but keep the spin low. That's how the long drive tour players hit it so far. That's it. I look at your spin, your spin's 3,300. That's, that's a lot. That's a lot, that's yeah. on the high range. So the, literally that spin, it's almost like causing the ball to balloon and it won't carry as far. So what I think we should do is we should try and control that spin. Now the okay. question is, is how do you control spin, right? There's two things that affect spin. Number one, how hard you're swinging. Yep. What most people don't realize is the harder you swing, the more spin you have. So it kind of works against you, the harder you swing. So how do we not let more club head speed increase our spin? Well, there's another factor called spin loft, which is literally, it's the difference between the loft on your club and the angle that you're hitting the ball, yep. right? If I can take the loft that it's coming off and the angle that you're hitting the ball and make that less, yep. it can reduce spin. There you go. So these players try and reduce something called spin loft, right? Which yep. is that, that angle. Now your spin loft is 18 degrees. We see it right here in the middle of the screen, 18 Which degrees. Is high. Average yep. on PGA Tour is somewhere between 14 and 15. Yep. So that's telling me is that the difference between your loft uh, mm -hmm. or the dynamic loft and your attack angle is a lot higher than it should be. And if we can reduce those, you actually will get the ball to reduce spin and carry farther. So I don't necessarily need to swing faster. So you're at 109 right now. If we could just, if we could just adjust that, we probably could hit it farther. Now, okay. th so the key here is we gotta do, uh, I'd say one thing. Your attack angle, in other words, the angle that you're coming in the ball, yep. is down at 3.6, right? That's we can right. see negative 3.6. Yep. And if you think about a driver, a driver comes in, here's the ball, the driver comes down, it gets to the bottom of the arc, and then it should hit the ball on the up strip. Up. So the attack angle, it should be traveling up, mm -hmm. which would take that, what we talked about, that spin loft, and it would make it less, right? right? You were hitting it down, 3.3. Yep. .3. So why don't we do one where we try and increase your attack angle, okay? and let's see what happens to the numbers. Okay. Okay. So not necessarily increase speed, just try and increase. And by the way, your ball speed was 155. So you have club speed 109, ball speed 155. So let's just try and focus on getting a little higher attack angle. And then if it works, we'll talk about what we did. Huh. All right, so this is a perfect example. So Dave, remember, you were at 109, right? Yep. You were 109, yep. and your carry was 252. That's right. We just, you just decreased your club head speed to 106. You just lost three miles an hour. That's right. But your carry went to 258. You just increased by six yards. Yep. How is that possible? So literally, before, remember, we saw you had this 109 mile an hour club head speed, but the ball was spinning a lot. Yep. It was at 3,300. Well, now we brought the spin down to 3,000. I still think we can bring it down even more. I do too. But just by bringing down that 300 degrees, the ball is actually carrying farther with a shorter, with a slower speed. It's similar ball speed though. Ball speed's exactly the same, yeah. right? But look at your attack angle. Your yep. attack angle went from negative 3.3 down to plus 1.8. So literally, right. just by changing, literally probably where you hit this ball on the arc, like yep. if you hit down yep. versus hitting up, and we hear a lot of people take, move the ball forward. That's right. Sometimes this can help. Just by changing that, you actually swung slower and picked up yardage. So, you know, we see this quite a bit even on the tour. I mean, when you see players like, like a Justin Thomas, for instance, that cruises around 177, but he optimizes his condition so well that oftentimes he's hitting it further than guys that have much higher speed well, than why don't, let's, let's just get to the chase. How did you do that? How did you increase your attack angle? 
So basically to increase my attack angle, I did move the ball a little bit further forward, but all I really did, Greg, was I just addressed where I normally did, but had the ball that little bit further forward. So basically now the arc is coming down and the club is starting to come up, I'm gonna increase my attack angle. Right, so you're effectively moving the ball forward. Over there. Yeah. Right. Now I hear a lot of people, so that's an easy way. Get the ball further, maybe tee the ball up higher. There you go. Trying to get the bottom of the arc lower. I hear a lot of people say, um, hanging back, like sh show what that means. Yeah, that's not really what you want to do because a lot of people will move it up and they'll hang back, they'll stay on their back foot, but what generally happens is although they may hit up, the club face closes down and now all of a sudden they've well, got a nasty Two hook. things happen, that, that can happen, but remember the spin loft, your, your loft yes. and your attack angle. If you hang back and you try and increase your attack angle by hanging back, it also increases your loft. So literally, you haven't done anything. No. You've just, you just basically hit the ball with the same amount of spin, and now it goes higher and it goes shorter. That's right. right. So right. a simple tip here would be? So a simple tip would be either T height, move it higher, move it more forward. Don't hang back. But the other thing, a lot of people, Greg, when you move the ball forward, they address it up here. Now they right. open their shoulders. They get steep on it. Yep. So yep. what I try and do is I just leave it there and pretend I'm actually hitting the ball here. Almost yep. like when you're in a bunker and you're not hitting the ball. Yep. You're almost hitting behind the ball. I also and think that'll help me hit up. I think another thing that people do a lot, Dave, is they, they don't release. Yes. Now this is probably more of a good player type yep. thing, is they hold the angle, right? Whereas if when you release the club, it actually gets that bottom of the arc a little bit earlier. You just gotta make sure you do that the right way too. That's correct. So this is why it's very important to make sure your drive is fit properly for you. You get on something like a track man, make sure this is optimized. It's, they're so good these days at adjusting the settings and changing the settings that even with a little slower speed, you might increase your distance quite substantially by just getting the correct angle. So you can see how important technology is in being able to dial in a player's distance. I mean, literally, Dave, we took your club head speed and we reduced it by three miles an hour, but we still increased your yardage. Imagine if we maintained your club head speed and did this, we can get some serious improvement. And that's the power of technology. That's right. We'll increase my speed next time. Next time. Thanks for watching.